Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope everybody's feeling good. Everybody's still hanging on. We're doing okay. It's 2024. We're making it, right? Drinking our water, getting our body moving. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the case of Nancy Brophy. And you guys, I just have to tell y'all, full disclosure right here in the beginning, I have a soft spot for, like, what word do I want to use? Um, I don't want to say elderly people because it doesn't mean elderly, but like the older generation, like the, you know, the grandmas and the pawpaws and the, that, that type of age group. And, oh my gosh, this situation here is just, <clears throat> so before we get into it though, I did want to let you guys know if you don't already know. Hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. And over there, we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there and I have a $2 tier where all the true crime stuff that cannot go on to YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon. I also have an Instagram, I'm on Snapchat, I am on Facebook, and I'm also on Like to Know It. And on Like to Know It's where you can find links to a lot of the stuff that I have, like shirt, extensions, this mama necklace. I love this mama necklace so much, I wear it all the time. Uh, you can find all of those links down in my description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So, okay. Let's talk about Nancy and let's just start at the beginning. Nancy Crampton Brophy. She was born on June 16th of 1950 in Wichita Falls, Texas. She was a daughter of actually two lawyers and she had, from what we could tell, a pretty decent slash privileged upbringing. She ended up meeting a man named Daniel Brophy after she moved to Oregon in the early 90s. Nancy was actually attending the Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts in Portland. And this is where Daniel was actually working at the time as an instructor. Daniel is a very interesting guy. His background is in food and his background in food went back way over 50 years. And his first job was even working at a restaurant. Now, Daniel described himself as an expert in marine biology, a master gardener, and a mushroom expert as well. He had even taken his students on mushroom hunting trips and recently was enjoying beekeeping as a hobby in his spare time. Daniel was also known by others at work as the most active facility member that led field trips, organized student projects, and he was the favorite speaker in the community. His students absolutely loved and adored him. I mean, he really gave all of his self to helping and teaching others. And he was just known to always go out of his way to help friends and strangers. He loved giving back to his community. By 2018, 60 year old Nancy and 63 year old Daniel had been married for about 25 years. And the two of them were living in Portland, Oregon together. Now they didn't have children, so it was just them too. And again, Daniel spent like all of his spare time and his work time with basically, I guess, other people's children, teaching, guiding, and just doing those types of things. Now, at this point, Daniel was working as an instructor um, at the Oregon Culinary Institute, and Nancy was a self-published romance author. Now, you guys get this. Nancy published a series of romance novels called The Wrong Husband, The Wrong Lover, The Wrong brother. Now I know you can write books and get creative about anything you want to get creative about, but if my husband was writing books, the wrong wife, the wrong lover, the wrong sister, I would have questions. I'd be like, okay, I don't want to be insecure. Am I overthinking this? But are we okay? Nevertheless, this series of The Wrong Husband, The Wrong Brother, and The Wrong Lover was published. And then in 2011, Nancy published a 700-word essay called 
how to murder your husband. Now, none of these did particularly well, but Nancy enjoyed writing them anyways. Now, unknown or behind the scenes to the people that were around Nancy and Daniel, nobody knew that they were actually struggling financially. Like, Daniel was very frugal. A penny pincher, he did not like spending extra money on things that they did not need. However, Nancy, on the other hand, loved to spend and she actually got them in a ton of credit card debt. And not only that, Nancy ended up draining all of their savings and their retirement funds, which can I insert this right here? I really feel like that should be criminal. If you are married and one person drains the retirement fund of the other person and they don't know, is that legal? Nevertheless, to top it all off, Nancy was actually in charge of all of the spending and all of the bills, so it was assumed by Daniel that they were okay. I mean, he didn't think that they were rich or anything, but he did think that they were paying their bills, and a lot of people believe that Daniel actually didn't have any idea how bad their financial situation actually was. Like, this man is still working and he don't have any retirement money left. And Nancy's books were definitely not getting the attention that she had hoped for, which meant that she was not making any money from that. She even had a book signing once and literally not one single person showed up to get their book signed by her. It is said that Nancy wanted to like live this life of a famous writer and a famous author, but it just was not happening for her, which meant that Nancy needed to get some side jobs. And Nancy did not like working at all. She only wanted to spend all of her time uh, writing these books, hoping to hit it big one day. So while her husband Daniel is working every single day, Nancy starts getting like all these credit cards and maxing them out and buying herself new things. When Daniel would ask Nancy just how she was able to afford all of these expensive things, Nancy would tell her husband Daniel that she got a bonus at work and he believed her. But even after she would buy herself like all of these things, Nancy still was not happy. In a blog that she wrote, she called her life boring. She said that she wanted more. She said that she wasn't happy with just like settling with things like Daniel was. She said that Daniel was a simple man and did not want any more out of life. He didn't want to spend anything extra that he didn't have to spend. And I'm sorry to chuckle telling you guys this, but I mean, a lot of people are like that. Like he was in his retirement age. He was still working. He probably wanted to be able to stop working and do what he wanted to do and not have to worry about if he could pay his bills or not. But to Nancy, that was boring. And he was just basically dragging her down at this point after being married for 25 years. Now, because of all this pressure she was putting on him, he thought that, you know, maybe they were struggling financially, but they were still living a good life. And he was content with that. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, tragedy struck. On the morning of June 2nd of 2018, Daniel got up, he did his normal morning routine, and he left for what he thought would just be a normal day at work except it was not a normal day at work. When Daniel's students arrived for class, they found his body in the kitchen, deceased from two gunshot wounds. His students finding him like that, I can just imagine they were panicking. Again, this is not only a human life, but this is their favorite teacher. They looked forward to seeing him. They immediately tried to resuscitate him, but he was already gone. When the police were called, obviously they all swarmed the school and they immediately began to investigate. And when Nancy was questioned, she denied having anything to do with it, which obviously she's like, I would, I, 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 I don't know. What happened? She told the investigators that she had walked the dogs and she took a shower on the morning of this incident. And after the investigators interviewed her, she was believed at first. It wasn't until the investigators ended up going and pulling the traffic camera footage to see who drove into the school that day where they found that Nancy's minivan had actually came to the Culinary Institute during a 13 minute window that Daniel's life was ended. Now, when they went back and confronted Nancy with this footage, Nancy ended up claiming that she had no memory of this drive. 
She said that she had retrograde amnesia from the trauma of finding out that Daniel had passed. Now, investigators at this point were already suspicious of Nancy, but now she was their number one suspect. So they started to do a deep dive into her. Now, when the cops began to investigate her, they went to her social media and they started seeing different things. They saw that the day after Daniel's passing, she went on to Facebook and made a post describing Daniel as her best friend, and she said that she was struggling to make sense of everything. She wrote that she was overwhelmed by everyone's loving responses, but asked that the phone calls be stopped for a few days until she was able to function. So the investigators see this like emotional post, thanking everybody, you know, giving her, asking for them to give her time. The investigators then go into the neighborhood and they start talking to the neighbors. They spoke to one of the neighbors, his name was Don, and he lived by them for six years. When they questioned Dawn about her and how she seemed, this is when he told them that she seemed pretty emotionless. Matter of fact, he had ran into her and was asking her like how she was and da, 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 da. And she told him that she was actually a suspect and she seemed completely unfazed and just totally emotionless. And although the Facebook post and the way that her neighbors saw her, conflicted, there was definitely some truth to it and the investigators were building a case against Nancy. When the investigators went to check Nancy's internet search history, this is when they found that she had been searching untraceable ghost firearms like right before the murder of her husband. Now, even though her and Daniel were like struggling financially, Nancy spent about $15,000 on firearms and individual parts the year before his passing. I did not even know this was a thing until researching about this case. She bought a uh, ghost gun kit and that was actually delivered in January of 2018. And the following month right after that, Nancy bought a Glock barrel on eBay. Investigators also found that Nancy had been searching how to clean a Glock 17, how to load it, and she had also watched videos on how to operate this type of weapon. Now, when Nancy was questioned, she told the investigators that Daniel knew all about this ghost gun and that uh, she'd actually given it to him so he could protect himself while he was picking out mushrooms and foraging and stuff. She said that the parts that she ordered were simply for research purposes for a novel that she was writing. Now the investigators searched and searched and searched and although they were never able to find the exact weapon that was used against Daniel, they did come to the conclusion that the bullets that were used on him did come from a Glock 17. This made the investigators believe that uh, Nancy mix matched the parts that she purchased so the weapon could not be properly identified and traced back to her. She really thought she had figured this whole thing out and then she was like literally researching it on her computer in her home. <sighs> Nevertheless, after gathering all of this evidence, Nancy was arrested on September 6th of 2018, and she was charged with second degree murder. Now, almost four years later, after the killing of Daniel Brophy, Nancy's trial started in April of 2022. The prosecution's case was almost completely circumstantial though, and it really relied mostly on that traffic camera footage and Nancy's search history. But the prosecution definitely believed that they had Nancy's motive down and the motive was money. Daniel actually had uh, life insurance policies that totaled around $1.4 million. And investigators say that only a few days after Daniel passed, Nancy allegedly asked them if they could give her the official statement saying that she wasn't a suspect so she could go and collect the money from his policies. And that is always wild to me when somebody does that because I don't ever want to lose a loved one like, like that close to me. Lord knows I want to live to be at least 130 and I want my loved ones to live to be 131 at the least. Okay, but... These situations, when this happens and the person goes and files for the insurance literally right after, like you don't even have them buried yet. You haven't even had a funeral. You haven't done anything and you're already trying to collect. I, I, I don't know. 
I don't know, y'all let me know down below, is that normal that quick? And because of this, because that she did this, the prosecution believed that Nancy had a plan in place all along and that she was the only one who would benefit from Daniel's passing. Nancy's How to Murder Your Husband essay was excluded from evidence since it was written seven years before Daniel's death. So the jury never even heard about it. But in this essay, it talked about possible motives, why someone would want to kill their husband, like cheating, DV, and money. I'm gonna read you guys a little piece of this essay. As a romantic suspense writer, I spend a lot of time thinking about the murder and consequently about police procedure. After all, if the murder is supposed to set me free, I certainly don't wanna spend any time in jail. I find it is easier to wish people dead than to actually kill them. I don't want to worry about the blood and brains splattered on my walls. And really, I'm not good at remembering lies, but the thing I know about murder is that every one of us has it in him or her when pushed far enough. Now, Nancy ended up getting on the stand and testifying uh, in her own trial, and many could not believe how strange she acted. She she was. She was very casual at times, laughing over the little, littlest, silliest thing, and she seemed completely unfazed. Y'all check this out. Let me know if you can't hear me. I will. Because you can't read my lips. <laughs> um, Sorry. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Wichita Falls, Texas. And how big is Wichita Falls, Texas? It's 100,000, but a lot of that is the air base that's there. And you guys, Daniel's mom got up there and testified. And, oh, my heart. Because, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are or how old your child is. That's still your child. She ended up getting up there and testifying, Daniel's mother. And uh, she was being asked questions about like how she found out. I think she asked me if I'd had TV on and I said no. And she said, well, I've just had a call from Max. And there's been, um, I don't remember if she said shooting or trouble at the school. And um, I said to her, well, are you going to go down there? And she said, no, I'm not going to go because there'll just be a lot of policemen there and a lot of cars. I'm not going to go. And I think that was basically the, the phone call. She gets off the phone with Nancy and she goes and finds her husband, which is Daniel's father. Okay, he was, I guess, out working in the yard. And she's telling him this and she's stressing, even at her age and her son being his age, and she goes back in the house and she calls Nancy and says, hey, I think you need to go to the school and uh, check on Daniel, her husband, but her son. And she said that Nancy said, oh, okay. So Nancy then, according to Daniel's mom, left to go to the school to check on Daniel. Well, Daniel's mom said that she didn't hear from her for like an hour or so, so she called her. When she called her and got a hold of Nancy, Nancy said that she was in the car with the police at the school, and yes, it was Daniel. She just said it to her like that. And Daniel's mom said that she, she said her world fell apart. Ugh, you guys, she said her world fell apart. And mind you, Daniel and Nancy had been married for 25 years. So Daniel's parents knew Nancy very well, or so they thought. So in his mother's mind, Nancy had found out once she got up to the school. However, when Nancy was on the stand, she actually admitted to telling Daniel's mom that Daniel had passed away before ever even being informed. Y'all watch this. I want to start uh, just clear, clarifying something from yesterday. Okay. Uh, that I believe you testified to. Um, you, you said when you got downtown um, later that morning of uh, June 2nd that uh, you kind of figured what was going on based on how people were reacting mm -hmm. around you. But is it, it, it is true that nobody actually told you that it was Dan that had been killed until Detective Posey, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was during that interview? Yes. But you stated that Karen called you before you went into that interview. Yes. Dan's mother, Karen. Yes. And that you told her that it was Dan and that he was dead. Yes. 
based on the fact that you thought that Dan had been killed? It was more than think. But you hadn't been told? I had not been told, but I had not heard from him. All of his friends avoided looking at me, and the police officers knew who I was before I got there, and one police officer hugged me. This is not good news I'm going to hear. What if you were wrong? Then I would have called Karen and said, happy days, I was wrong. And Karen and I would have celebrated and we would have laughed and we would have had family jokes about this for 20 years and it would have been much, much better than it turned out. After a seven week trial, the jury went out for deliberations. It only took them two days for the jury to come back and find Nancy guilty of second degree murder. And Nancy did end up getting sentenced to life in prison and the greed, that the selfishness, the, the he trusted her. 25 years together, he trusted his wife. And it just really reminds me of the scripture that the, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Not that money is evil, but for the love of money is the root. It's where it starts. The love of money is where that root starts and it grows up evil. And... For her, like, what she was like living in this fantasy world, writing these novels that didn't do good, and some of them were pretty, you know, they had some scenes in them, if you know what I mean. And her solution was to end her husband's life. And again, this is a man that was very loved, spent pretty much all of his time serving others. And it's just so sad. And then to see his mother, even at her age, have to get up there and talk about it. Devastating. Have you guys heard about this case? So sad, but she's in prison now and she will spend out the rest of her days. She will go through all of the elderly changes in prison and it will be bad and it will be rough. And she will not have the help or the medical treatment as she continues to age in there. So what do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. If the weather is nice where you're at, I hope you will get outside. Call your grandmas. Call your grandpas. Tell them that you love them and you miss them. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. And thank you again for watching. Bye.